prevalence of hypothyroidism is quite high in India. It's about 11% compared to about 4% in other countries. Women are even more likely to get hypothyroidism than men. There is a lot more talked about diet, what to eat, what not to eat for thyroid patients. And today we are going to concentrate on just that. So firstly, let's understand what is hypothyroidism. Hypo means low and thyroidism means problem with thyroid hormone production. Thyroid is a butterfly shaped gland which sits in your neck in the front and produces thyroid hormones, namely T3 and T4. Now, when your doctor orders a blood test for you, you may have seen in thyroid profile that it also includes something called as TSH. Now, TSH is thyroid stimulating hormone, and that is almost like a master switch or master control in your brain and comes from a gland called pituitary. So remember, if your thyroid hormones for some reason become low or the gland is not able to produce much of thyroid hormones, that signal is sent to your brain, which senses that the level of thyroid hormones is low. So I need to produce more TSH, which is your stimulating hormone. Hence, the level of TSH goes up in your blood. But again, no matter how much TSH is produced, if there is some issue with the gland, the thyroid gland itself is not going to be sufficiently producing thyroid hormones. So let's try and understand the reasons behind hypothyroidism. The most common reason is autoimmune, whereby antibodies are produced in your body and they attack your own thyroid cells and make it work less effectively in producing thyroid hormones. The other reason still common in some parts of India is iodine deficiency. Remember, iodine is required in the process of preparation for thyroid hormones. Other reasons are genetic, or some of the medications which can actually affect thyroid gland function and in someone who has undergone surgery to remove his or her thyroid gland for some reason. So then why thyroid hormones are so important? What do they do in our body? Well, thyroid hormones affect almost every system in our body. Take cardiovascular or heart or respiratory lungs or digestive system, central nervous system, or even your bones and muscle health, thyroid hormones impact everywhere. But the ultimate important thing that the thyroid hormones do is that they control the speed of your metabolism. The higher the metabolism, the faster the metabolism, the faster you burn calories at rest. Now let's get that right. The faster the metabolism, the faster you burn calories at rest. And you can imagine now, in hypothyroidism, where your gland is not functioning so well, the whole metabolism slows down. So you burn less calories at rest, and that means accumulation of more fat, and you struggle to lose weight. So what is it like living with hypothyroidism? Well, let me tell you that our patients feel quite terrible with hypothyroidism. They're often tired all the time, feeling lethargic with muscle aches and pains. They have sleep disturbances. They often suffer from depression or low mood. And they have issues like constipation. And often in females, we see that their periods are quite irregular and they struggle with fertility issues as well. So coming to the key part of the discussion, how can we make our patients feel better? So the first thing you need to do is to get diagnosed properly through your doctor. And if you're diagnosed with hypothyroidism, to get yourself on the right dose of thyroxine. So the thyroxine tablets need to be taken first thing in the morning on empty stomach. And make sure you're not taking things like calcium, iron, or other multivitamin tablets with it and leaving a long gap between the thyroid hormones and other tablets if necessary. And if you want to consume soya or milk products, again, make sure that there is a long gap between the, your thyroxine tablet and these products because it can affect the absorption of the tablet. Now, there is a lot of noise about goitrogens, which are the substances in food which can affect your thyroid gland function. So often patients are told not to eat cauliflower, cabbage or broccoli. 
But the guidelines and the evidence suggest that if you eat them in low to moderate amount and you actually cook them, there is no need to worry. You can safely consume them even if you got hypothyroidism. This is the most common question I get asked. Although there is no specific diet for hypothyroidism, I've made a list of certain things you can include in your diet, which will help you to keep your weight under control. Because remember, that's the biggest challenge our hypothyroid patients face. So make sure your diet is low in saturated fats, low in carbohydrates, but rich in protein. So include a lot of beans, pulses. If you eat fish and eggs or meat, that's pretty good. Or other proteins. Fibers are quite important because often, as we discussed earlier, they have constipation. Healthy oils and nuts are quite good and they include plenty of vegetables, fruits. There are studies which indicate vitamin D deficiency can be linked to thyroid disorders or issues. So make sure that your vitamin D is up to date and topped up. Physical exercise, especially aerobic exercise is quite good and increase to moderate or high intensity. And that's quite useful in hypothyroid patients to help lose weight or maintain it. It's very important that you have regular monitoring of your TSH levels to make sure that they are within target as your thyroxine hormone requirement may change over a period of time. There are things like antibody tests, which are a little expensive, but we often do in certain patients to see if they're going to require thyroxine hormone for a long term. Also, if you're planning to conceive or get pregnant, you must speak to your doctor in advance because getting your TSH within target is quite important. Thyroxine hormone is very crucial for baby's brain and growth. The other important thing is to get your annual checkups for diabetes, fasting, lipid or cholesterol, and your heart check. So with hypothyroidism, you can still stay healthy, maintain your weight with good exercise and diet as we discussed. Thank you.